Tell me what does it look like in heaven? Is it peaceful? Is it free like they say? Does the sun shine bright forever? Have your fears and your pain gone away? Cause here on earth everything's different There's an emptiness
Let us pray. Our loving Father and our God, as we gather at this occasion, we invite your divine presence to be with us. We are so thankful that, Lord, we can know that you are God and that you are interested in the affairs of men. We thank you, Lord, for the life of your daughter, Sister Rose Lee. And we pray, O oh God, that, Lord, you will be with the family. We ask, O oh God, that you will continue to be with us today, that you will guide this program, and that everything that we do here today will be done decently and in order. We place each member present here in your hands. And we ask, O oh God, that this occasion will cause us to reflect on, Lord, our position with you at this time. Fill us, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. And now, O God, we present this program into your hand. Take full control, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. If you look on your program, Sorry, and elders, you will notice that there is a name there that is Pastor Andre Dixon. Pastor Dixon in Michigan, and he asked me to represent him in facilitating the program today. So on behalf of Pastor Dixon, Debbie, and the family, we want to extend a heartfelt condolences to you to remind you that there is coming a day when death itself will be dead. I don't know about you, but last year, this time, Debbie, my father died suddenly, and I can say I know what you're feeling. And it will never get better. But we are anticipating the day when death will be no more. What a day, glorious day that will be. Hold on. Weeping only endures for a night. But joy, anticipate. You know that you're not probably attacked from now. Is either you're going to change or get somebody's jacket and put on. But you will not be allowed to participate. This is God's church. When you're coming to church, you must dress like you're coming to church. What is it? Amen. Also, absolutely no alcoholic beverages or smoking on the property. And if we see you, we're going to ask you to leave. Because this is God's church. We must respect that about his house. During the opening sentences earlier, the first elder doing the opening prayer, and now we're going to go into having the scripture reading, the first lesson, which will be done by Natalia Hafenden, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 15 to 58. You're asked to use the lower lectern. Is Natalia here? Okay, go right ahead. After Natalia, you'll have an item, or we will have an item by Sammy's Jones' niece in that order. Behold, I show you a misery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. 
in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on corruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death, death be swallowed up in the victory. O death, where is thy state? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 58 and last. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Here in this, a portion of God's holy word. We honor it by saying, Amen.
Yeah. Listen, let me tell you something. I got out of the hearse, I was fucked up. And I realized that he's still acting up. Yeah, look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, Satan have no place here. We're going to send her to rest in style. Yeah. I know somebody? Yeah. yeah, we're going to praise God like we feel it. Yes. As never before. Amen. I'm sure the video presentation is not yet ready. The family um, memory of Sir Rosie. You're working on it? So you're ready now? If you're ready, we can take you after which we'll have the second lesson, which is Ecclesiastes chapter 3, 1 to 8, from Mr. Kevin um, Cespedes. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Kevin.
one were so close is that both of us had our mothers not being there. Moses' mother was away in England and my mother had already passed. So that, I think, helped to create the bond. Plus the fact that we're both born in September and we always reached out to each other on our birthdays. Well, life happens and so for a while we didn't lose track of each other. But Rose, being the family-oriented person that she is, she sought me out. And I clearly remember the day when I got a phone call and Rose was at the other end of the line. Wow. We promised each other that we would never ever lose touch again. There followed nights of long conversations. Sometimes we spoke about nothing. And sometimes everything. We would ask each other, you remember this? You remember that? And her response would be, yes ma'am. Mm -hmm. Now of course we spoke about the kids. She, her two kids, Dorna and Barry, are her pride and joy. So we always spoke about her children. And of course, her profession, because Rose was so much the teacher. She was so concerned about her students and their education. I also need to thank her. My cousin Rose, I thank you so much for stepping in when I wasn't there. In my absence, when I for helping my brother Belvin. Um, you are always so reliable, so selfless. And when you couldn't be there, you enlisted the help of Doug and also of Norma, your friend. Doug and Norma, I really, really thank you both. So my cousin, this is not goodbye. This is see you later. I am so happy that we were able to meet up in April of 2023. It was a very short visit, but those are precious moments that I'll never forget. I clearly remember you talking about your faith in God, your steadfast faith in God, despite the obstacles. So I just want to say, Rest softly, my cousin. Walk good. May God, may God just welcome you along with, so that you can rest along with the grandmas or grandpa Charles or Uncle Aubrey, my mom. Birdie and your mom who passed recently and embarrassed me. This is not the dark. This is see you later. Thank you. At this time, we're going to have Miss Sandra Dixon, our cousin. Baby, sorry, our cousin. She's going to do a panel. We have a video presentation, but she's here, so we don't need a video. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Michelle Davis, Sandra Davis, as most of my family know me. Oh, hold on a minute, my dear. I'm going to take off my jacket. that are important. 
and that is family because family was everything to her. And Tell her everything that I valued about her and that I respected about her. And here I am telling you guys, a truly loving human being. Rosalie never asked for anything for herself. She was always looking to help other people. She was always looking to make sure that we as a family looked out for each other. She never asked for anything for herself. Always somebody else. And I'm happy I have the opportunity to stand in front of you guys and to tell you that this is a woman that I love because there, there's nobody else like her. And we are going to miss her. I am going to miss her. Dorna, I know you're not here and you're listening, but just know that I'm going to be here for you. And my little man, and Dougie, you, I'm happy the day that I met you, that Rosalie made sure that I met you. Do you guys know, Dougie is the best son, Rosalie, she's a testament, he's a testament to the woman Rosalie is and the son that she raised. So, yes, yeah, so thank you guys. Doug, thank you for having me. All right, thanks, guys. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for them again.
be having the first tribute from Miss Cornet Bonner, former principal of Borden Primary School. And we'll have Michael Jones, nephew, for Mahog SDA Church. For Miss Melody Greenio, or this is my cousin Malcolm, and not come back here until it's the next segment of the program. So follow the tribute carefully. Go ahead. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. To God be the glory, great things he has done. And in spite of the circumstances, we have to give God praise. Um, it is usually said we must not start to graduate with an apology for Brother Doug. I must was meeting her as Mrs. Dixon for the first time then, but I met and then, but I met Mrs. Dixon through the United Church because she used to be a United Church member. They have to become one. So, and we can't blame her for that. I met Mrs. Dixon church many, many years before at Clarendon College. When I came to Plum, I met a group of 10 teachers. if anybody else is here that was on the staff then with Mrs. Dixon. But we worked together as a team of teachers there. One person predeceased. And so we continue the work, those of us who were there, until some of us retired and some of us moved on for one reason or the other. While at Plowden, we were well supported by the Dixon and family. Certainly Brother Doug put in his heart too. And through our ministry and through the work at Plum, we are proud to say we produced a head boy, the son of Mr. and Mrs. Dixon. We produced a head boy who was head boy then of Mayday High School. Oh, we lift our hats to them. We also had a number of activities, including our gardening at Plum, one from the Bryce United Church and one from Richmond. We worked together, and Mrs. Dixon knew them very well. Mrs. Dixon was a very kind woman. That what approach have, how we gave to each other certain things. Because some things you would say not good enough. But as I said, what cockroach have in giving friend? And so Mrs. Dixon and I were not afraid of giving to each other what we have because we were doing it in love. Mrs. Dixon was a caring person. She knew basically every single thing of her because on the 5th of October every single year, the date of her son's birthday, I can expect a call from Mrs. Dixon to say, Happy birthday, Mrs. Bonner. If there's no other birthday greeting I get, it is always from Mrs. Dixon. We worked well together. We loved each other. And we trust that she will continue to rest in peace.
and then right after Port Mambo, we'll have Sammy Jones. Then we will move on to uh, Plauden Primary and Infant. Then we will have Miss Beverly Grinnell, and then Miss Joyce Malcolm, and Miss Alexia Lee. Please follow. Sorry, follow your program.
incarnation, I greet you well. Believe you me, I wrote this little remembrance for Miss ba Miss Miss Mrs. Dixon, but I can't read it. You believe that? Yes. Mrs. Dixon served the Plowden Hall age and Plowden Primary and Infant School from 1989 to 2020. There is one Mr. Ling Fogo who should be here. Who should be here? She's inside somewhere. Pamela Swaby, she's inside somewhere. And Paula Bonner, you would have heard from before. All right. Those were the, the, some of the best years of Mrs. Dixon's life. And the very interesting years in the lives of the students she taught. She proved to her colleagues, parents of the students she taught, students, and the community at large, that inspiring and motivating young minds to be the best person society could ever hope for. She was the student's mentor, friend, and guide who helped them to navigate life's challenges. Her dedication to teaching and to her students was exemplary. She had an innate ability to connect with her students. Her teaching was contagious and her colleagues emulated her. Her enthusiasm for the subject matter was palpable in every single class. And I stand here and tell no lie. <laughs> Mrs. Dixon was a vital and buckle washer. She was in devotions where she told the Bible stories so you would visualize it and re repent and walk with God. She was in sports at the school, you know, but yet still Mrs. Dixon got herself involved in the, in the DA, the District Association. That's a cluster of schools where we're in. And then she would also find herself at the high school's sports. I remember when Douglas, her son, was running, you know, Mrs. Dixon would ask Mrs. Bonner for time. And she would run every single race that Douglas ran in at Mayday High. When she came back to school the next day, nobody not tired. <laughs> Now, Mrs. Dixon was also a member of our 4-H club at school. She was teaching the children sewing, rabbit rearing and care, baking and juice making. This is where Fogo came in and they would, not, they would butt heads together and produce a whole lot of stuff for 4-H. You see this lady standing beside me? Is she catching me up in case I make the mistake? <laughs> now, Mrs. Dixon was, you, well, the school has an outreach program where we visit members in the community, the Shakti members. Mrs. Dixon would not forget that. She could just tell you off her hand who the, who the, who the Shakti members were. And then somebody would grab a chalk and write it down. You know, she was that good. So she would bring the children along with her, or that was how the program was designed at school. That when we are going out to bring greetings to the Shotty members, we would bring the students. Have a little devotion. Douglas, you're a good boy. I never see a boy. <laughs> Mrs. Dixon was in everything. Did I tell you? She was a member of the excursion team. It was okay. Listen, it was a trip to be talked about for years. Everybody enjoyed themselves. 
welfare. She ran a partner plan that was comparable to none. Karen Smith, that is me talking to you here. You see me now? I benefited from that partner plan when I did that first degree. Give it up for Mrs. Smith. Yes, ma'am. And her partner was professionally done. I'm coming down, Miss Davis. Stop pulling my dress. <laughs> Mrs. Dixon was a top notch educator. But she was also down to earth again. And thank her family for loaning her to us for at Cloud Primary and Infant School for some 31 years. Another clap for that. That baby would have been born and be married. Eh? May her family and friends be comforted to know that she is resting in the arms of her Savior. Blessed love to you all.
you can shed tears that she is gone, or you can smile because she has lived. You can close your eyes and hope that she will come back, or you can open your eyes and see all she has done. Your heart can be empty because you can't see her, or you can be full of love and cheer. You can turn your back on tomorrow and leave yesterday, or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember her and only that she's gone, or you can cherish her memory and let it go. You can cry and close your mind. You can do what she wants, smile, open your eyes, love, and go on. Thank you.
what a song, what will it be when we get over yonder? I don't know about you, but I'm anticipating that day when we get over yonder. You see, I was asked to do this very important job by um, by Pastor Dixon and endorsed by Ducky. Yes. For there is coming a day when no heart is Peeps who are on the outside, thank you for making Spice Video Production. Please like, share, and subscribe.
what a day, glorious day that will be. On your program, we're at the segment that is slated open tributes. However, we have few persons down here. We have the husband, Mr. Dixon, and there was a particular lady who we are not remembering her name that went to Dougie and asked permission to make use of one of the opening triple slot. You will be after then I was asked at the 4-H club of the community um, and then I was also asked to add a tribute for the church. Alright, so Mr. Dixon is not coming again. So we will move on to the lady that asked Dougie to utilize. Is she here? Kamoya? Okay, good. Right after her will be the 4 H Club and then the church. Good afternoon. So this is a tribute to the family. So many times I've questioned certain circumstances, things I could not Get 
Chicago. Then we will have
In my brief conversations with some of our members, these were some of the sentiments that came out. She was a blessed teacher and a family person. She was jovial and fun-loving. She was kind and a compassionate friend. She was a team player. Sister Rosalie also had a profound with her faith. This spiritual foundation was a source of strength and comfort throughout her life, especially during challenging times. Her faith was a testament to her character, resilient and hopeful. Despite the challenges she faced, Sister Rose displayed remarkable courage and dignity. Her approach to life's adversities taught us of the value, taught us the value of resilience, the importance of facing each day with courage, and the power of maintaining a positive outlook. Today, as we reflect on her life, let us not dwell on the loss, but instead let us celebrate the gift of time we have with her. Let us cherish the memories, the laughter, the wisdom, and the love that she shared so generously. In bidding farewell, passion and love that she exemplifies, let us carry forward her legacy in our actions and our deeds. Her journey with us may have come to an end, but she will always be in our hearts and memories. She has left an indelible mark on our lives, and for that, we are eternally grateful. To her husband, Brother Doug, children Dorna and Barry, grandchildren Marquise and Marlene, son-in-law Marvin, siblings and other relatives, the Restore Seventh Day Adventist Church mourns with you, and we pray for your comfort and for the comfort of our Heavenly Father. And in those moments when the reality of her passing becomes overwhelming, may the fragrance of her memory perfume your mind and may the strength. Pastor Charles Glenn has asked me to pass on his sincere condolences to the family and assures you of his prayer on your behalf. Sister Rose will always be remembered and her legacy will continue to inspire us all. God bless you. Interactions with Auntie Rose 
or what I recall is a woman of virtue, someone who gives herself entirely in whatever office she serves. You know, people come up here and they say that she's a mother, she's this, she's that. Believe them, because she is someone who gives herself selflessly in everything. And I can imagine that Mary emulates all those attributes and those, those things that were inculcated in you as a child. So I just pray strength for you. I pray that you will find peace in the fact that you love someone that is irreplaceable. I pray that you are strength, my brother. Thank you. Amen. All right, we're coming down slowly but surely. We praise God for that. At this point, we will be having the third lesson, Psalm 91. And I gather that this is her favorite psalm. It will be done by, I hope I will crucify the name, Kiana Christian, Raquel Martin. Then we will have Item by Jordan Denton Brown. Then we will have a memorize from Miss Sis Maxine Henry. So we'll have the third lesson. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, but nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at the day. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh Only with time, only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the word of the living. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall anything come back to thy For he shall be in over thee. He shall be in your hands. He shall be in your hands. He shall be in your hands. He Tread upon the lion, and either the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample on their feet. Because he had set his love upon me, him on high, because he had known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Thank you.
You would believe that this was an overdue Christmas or birthday present. She looked forward to that. She was elated and filled with excitement. Her other trip to England was her when her mother passed and she went along with Barry to pay her final respect. She had so much love, especially for her grandmother Martina, who she knew as her mother all her life. Her friend Verna Manning remembers her in the following tribute, and Verna is here in church, so I see it's still over there. I'm just going to read that. Indeed, this day is a profoundly sad one. Not only have we sensed our own personal feelings are lost, but our hearts have been drawn to the entire family. The sun has set on an amazing life. Rosalie Huffington, as she was then called, was a friend from 1979 as they enrolled in the then West Indies College to be trained as primary school teachers. They were friends from the day they met to the end. Rosie always boasts of her growth tone. She was a wonderful human being, one who always spoke of her grandmother and father at college. She was the one who would speak up. We knew her as a Seventh-day Adventist from then. Remember the days we struggled. If for lunch Rosie sometimes, she only had one bun, it would be shared with her friend. Going home to both town on weekends and coming back with her little groceries. She would cook and take lunch and as sure as day, Rosie is going to share. Rosie was the talkative one during that time. They had to do field trips or field days. She was not afraid to question the teacher, Mrs. Barrow, Dr. or Mrs. Dows. She would always question Mr. Fido. She was never afraid to ask questions. It was Anthony Dawson who said, speak of me as you have always done. Remember the good times, laughter and fun. It's okay to cry. Tears are the safety valve God built into us to help us in times like these. I encourage us all that is not the end of Rosalie's story because the memory and the influence of her life remains. Her cousin Ben Roy, I haven't met him. Is Ben Roy here? Yes. I need to meet Ben Roy. Remember Rosie in a fun way. While growing up, in, he claimed that Rosie was a spoiled child. She cried for everything. He recalled that Rosie could not climb, she could not fling, she could not bat, and she was the only girl who did not take part in the outdoor play activities. So nobody wanted her on their team because she did not know what to do. He fondly recalled Rose as he affectionately called her as a bookworm. She was always reading. Whenever letters came from the post office, Rose was the one who read these for grandma. He recalled once when Grandma Martina cooked beef soup and Rose loved to leave the meat until the last to eat. And he just planned up and to exchange the meat for his meatless bone. And after he got the piece of meat from Rose, he poked it into his mouth and gave Rosie the bone without the meat. He laughed as he watched her crying and complaining to grandma that Ben stole her meat. That was a bittersweet moment. Lesson learned. He described her as a very friendly and kind soul. The life of a phenomenal, unwavering for us to emulate and model. I visited her in the United States. We slept in the same bed. We ate from the same pot. We had fun, food, and fellowship together. I will certainly miss those calls, that soothing voice. And each time we ended the call, especially in the last six months or so, 
we always told each other, I love you. I love you, sis. You know, that is something that I will forever have in my heart for my best friend. The loss of this multi-talented, vibrant woman is a major loss to all who shared her journey in one way or another. And this is mainly to Brother Doug and family, from Paul, that is Brother Doug's best friend, or one of Brother Doug's best friend. There is a tiny thing, there's a thing called center of gravity. It's when you find a point of balance of an object. In death, there is no such balance that loved ones can find by standing by themselves without true friends bearing your weight with you. And before I leave, I'm going to share a poem, and one that is popularly known, is The Dash by Linda Ellis. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted first came the date of birth and spoke the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between the years. For that dash represents all the time that they spent life on earth. And now only those who love them know what the little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is now how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So, think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged. If we could just slow down enough to consider what's true and real, and always try to understand the way other people feel. Be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. I let you all know. reach the point in the program where all of us can to get themselves ready to collect the offering. And this offering will go in aid of the uh, church building and while the offering is being collected, we're going to invite the praise to come. And I believe the song we are going to sing is um, What He Says, What He Says. So we're going to sing that song as the deacons collect the offering at this time.
Last Sunday morning we Rose turn. And today we are laying to rest Rose Dixon. I do not know if there's any more rules in the congregation. <laughs> but you don't have to worry. You don't even have to change your name. Because death is common to all men. Today, is Rose Dixon's day. Tomorrow, maybe yours and mine. Life, life is very serious. And none of us should play around.
And so I'm going to talk a little bit about them. And there are two passages of scriptures that I have selected for this evening's Thanksgiving service. The first one is in Zechariah. Zechariah the eighth chapter. And I'm going to read a few verses from verse 4 to verse 8. Yet old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem. And every man with his staff in his hand for the very age. Full of boys and girls. Playing in the streets thereof. Thus said the Lord of hosts. If it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in these days, should it also be marvelous in my eyes, said the Lord of hosts. Thus said the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country. And I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. The second text is in the last book of the Bible, which is Revelation chapter 21, and verses 1 to 4. It says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sin. Diana, 
Diana said, I can't wait to get to heaven. Because my teacher won't be there. I will not have any homework to do. What is your view? What is it that is on your mind? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to let you know that whatever you walk here today with, the greatest thing that must be on your mind is the kingdom of God. Rose died with the kingdom of God on her life. Amen. Amen. I want to just tell you about four things. And I will take my seat. Happy to hear that? Brownie, big up yourself. As the Kelsey peeps, we are, we are strong on the outside. <laughs> what do you say? Rich Pug, Rich Pug. Rich what? Rich Pug, Brownie. Rich Pug and Brownie. Big up Rich Pug and Brownie. People, Rich Pug. Where are
Yeah, you go on to Rosie, you know. More life for some people who can't spell their name. God bless Santa Rosie. <laughs> I hear Shadita Plon School. She hears all some people who can't sign their name. She I want them there finally, you know. Because here's where I do it. And where I hear it from? Here's where I do it, Bossy. Where I hear it from? We got Barry. Where I hear it from? Pete. Right, so. 5 0 5 star general, Marlon Alando Shaw. Right the side there. Peeps on me, so that I do so that, right? Enough man has our respect. Barry, buy the house, we got 50. Sister, them, the whole family. Be a family, yo, we got Miguel. We got me old J. Be a family there. Real family. Yeah. No joke, no stranger. Real family with you. So what's that? Yo, put in us. Put in us. Put in us. I was this. I'm buying the house. I was a big up on two roses again. Got some boy and some girl there and can't spell their name. Who you think they can't spell their name? Because she's a teacher. That's what I think. Yo, don't do that. Don't mess up. No, it can't. Live. Live. When it thing live, I want gold, I gold. Yeah. When you have put up your gun, too. What's up, sis? You know, I know you're not here, but what do you represent you? It's a birthday. Look at sis and stay strong. What do you feel? And we'll take care, we'll take care of daddy. Or about that. Hello. Dear shall be no night. 
no night pain. And they need no candle. Praise God. Hallelujah. Some of you should be helping me to say thank you, Jesus. Or some of you like me killing you right now. But praise God. JPS problem will be solved. It says, neither the light of the sun. You need that. Because we have too much sunlight on you. Skin cancer. <laughs> he said, for the Lord, the Lord God, give it a light. Praise God. True light. Yes. Free light. Yes. You don't have to pay for it. Oh. Jesus paid it all. Yes, sir. Say to you, there be no darkness here. No. The sun of no good for us can become a danger if it is in excess. It provides vitamin, yet it can create cancer. If too much exposure, we are living in an unbalanced world. That's what we find. But I want to let you know that heaven will be conducive. Heaven will be conducive for our survival. There will be no light there. Let me say to you, we'll walk in the light of God. No more shadows of evening. No more shadows of turning. Ladies and gentlemen, the light of God's glory will brighten the city of God. When rose get up, no more darkness. No, when rose get up, when rose get up, and look around, the next face that he will look into is that of Jesus. Yes. Brad Dixon, she loved you, but she never see you first. No, she never see Jesus. Yes. Jesus, the Son of God, and I beg every one of you this evening, strive to work and to be able to look Jesus in his face and be able to say, Lord, this is my God.
cars still are some. You are living. But you are, and you are going around. But you are reminding something. Because you don't know whatever is affecting you. And every day you get up. You think about it. You don't know. So to hear that there will be no more pain. Already I start to say, thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. Yes. The very knowledge of the various diseases cause pain. Yes. Sometimes you hear that people have a heart problem and your heart starts to flatter. <laughs> The authority of God's word. Let me say to you, lupus will be over. Yes. 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 Cancer will be over. Yes. No more breast cancer. No more no breast cancer. Yes. Ladies. Oh, 
You have no system all that. Come sister Jones. You know the song. Something is in my court. I cannot tell how soon it is. But this is the joy. When I shall be within the palace.
is better than those who live without him. It's better than those who live without him. Make your calling and election sure. Yeah, we're almost done. And you've been a decent congregation. We want to say thank you. We have three items to go. Then we will have the instructions and then the recession. At this time, we'll have the memories of our roles. Rosie. Uh, on behalf of Mary Tan, Douglas, and Dorna. Then we will have the eulogy by Mr. Stepford Davis. Then we'll have the prayer for the bereaved family by Pastor Grant. And then I'll come back for the instructions. We will have memory, then eulogy, then prayer, and then instructions in that order. Memory of R. Rosie from Uncle Doug, Barry, and Dorna, and her grandchildren, Marcus, and Morty Day. And by the way, this was Penn. A wife, a mother, a grandmother, a godmother, a sister, a cousin, a friend, a teacher. But Rosie was way more to us. She was a very loving, caring wife, and she took pride. She was well taken care of in all aspects. She was big on him looking sharp, especially in his suits and the shoes he wore to church. Her philosophy was, if you want to know which wife will take care of them husbands, I yard, just look on how the husband dress a road. <laughs> Kindly note, if Brother Doug hasn't been looking the sharpest lately, forgive her because she was away from him for a little while. She had a very special love for her two kids, Barry and Dorna, but her heartbeat was her two, were her two grandchildren, especially Marquise. Most of you would remember Rosie whether at teachers' forums, or walking in Mandeville, shopping in Irville, or Simpson Supermarket, that little boy that never left her side. Mordenay was soon to join the party five years later. Chaos, but good chaos, because it was very fun to hear them argue about who loved grandma more and who was grandma's favorite. It was ne a never ending puzzle that they both still can't figure out because Rosie was an expert in showing equal love, even though we know who her favorite was. But that's for a different script. Daddy Doug was the head of the home, but mommy Rosie was the driving force of everything that went on. She was our motivator, our counselor, our prayer warrior, our financial advisor. We couldn't do anything without Rosie playing a major role. She just had to be involved and she had to be the leader, whether you liked it or not. That's just how it is. We can recall days when we needed something to get done, whether it be work, school, or business, and felt like it was impossible, Rosie would have an answer. 
Some years ago, her son Barry was working on a very important project that he found very difficult to complete. Weeks upon weeks, he was at the same place, nowhere to turn and nowhere to go. He finally decided to tell Rosie, and her response, as always, don't worry yourself, me know who for call. 20 minutes later, she called her cousin, Michelle Davis, and it was already done. She was an expert at knowing who, where, what, when, and how to get it done. Just tell Rosie. It's, 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 it's not, it's, there's no denying that our beloved was the face of the family, and much of our respect came from the love and selflessness that she showed humanity. She was a people person who was ready to help. Rosie loved church, work days, sports days, crusades. Guess who would be their cooking? Rosie. We were amazed how she could do so much work in all aspects of church. Then come home, write the, the, the lesson plans, as she would call it, the dirty lesson plans. <laughs> Speaking of which, those lesson plans were Rose's nightmares. She would ask her husband, Doug, to stay up in the living room with her just for company as she wrote those lesson plans as to avoid any consequences that may arise if the educational officer showed up. But a couple minutes later, she would be right there somewhere in her room and Barry busy making noise with his stuff, imitating football, which took, took the annoyance of Rosie. Her mornings were early and were kicked off with Alan and Doreen, except Sab Sabbath mornings, when Daddy Doug got to play some gospel music that he would play every week. Rosie hated her children when her children slept in late and was always strategic in ensuring that this would happen. As soon as it was daylight, she either draw the curtains or start clapping the mosquitoes. <laughs> Mommy, me tired I try get some rest, Barry would say. Rosie would reply, oh, sorry, I threw me, I threw me never one mosquito to wake you up. <laughs>
she did not want any crying or sympathies at this moment, even though it was a very difficult time. She wanted happiness. She knew she had fought a good fight. And she was determined to make sure that when that day comes, she would be resting on those promises of the Almighty. There were people who were very instrumental during the sickness, her sickness. But Rosie had asked to be acknowledged, she had asked to be acknowledged. Maxine Headley, Pamela Swaby, Patsy Elliott, Sandy Simpson, Ricky, Inez Surf. These people came through for mom in the most extraordinary way during her most difficult times. We always would like to thank Natasha. We also, sorry, would like to thank Natasha Russell, Yvonne Thompson, Jermaine Bailey, who did a tremendous job in helping us during the passing of our beloved. Our gratitude, though, is extended to everyone who made this process so much easier. It's not the end, and now we need our prayers, the prayers, more than ever. We thank our beloved and the many bright memories she brought to our lives. The Dixon family wouldn't be the same without the driving force of her love, care, and resilience, discipline, and sacrifice. One last display, one last drive, and one last time to take the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I introduce to you Rosalie Elizabeth. Officiating ministers and members on the platform, and of course, our members of the Restore Seventh day Adventist Church, members of the Green Family, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, you would agree with me that we have already listened to many, many eulogies yes. since this afternoon, yes. and therefore, you would anticipate that I come up here and say, Ditto, Ditto, Ditto. And this reminds me of, I went to a funeral in Moko Clarendon, and the moderator said, you have a choice. When you come up, you can do one of two things. You can either speak or sing, but you cannot do both. And this other old man came up and he spoke for a very long time. And then he said, to tell you the truth, you know, when you plan to sing a song. But since the moderator said, you can only do one, I'm going to read the words. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, it therefore means, that the words that I have, I will be reading them. And of course, having listened to all the lovely singing and so forth, I wish I could sing. I remember when I was in college, and I tried to sing, and the raggedness I was singing, and the senior man came and touched me, and he said to me, warm star, you're too quiet, and then my singing went. But then, I sang in church with my choir on a Mother's Day, and my big daughter wasn't there, and when, we went home, my wife said to her, you should have heard your daddy sing today. And this is what she said. You know, all this time I heard they said that love is blind, but we never know say death do. <laughs> so, you don't have to worry about me singing this afternoon. In my time, in my days, I used to play cricket, and I used to get moving batsman. So I'm not used to coming at the end when everything is over. And therefore, I'll try my best to do what I came to do. My plan was simple, to give one minute for each year that Rosalie lived. And I heard the moderator say, we almost finished. We only have three items left. But he did not know that one of those items would be the one that I will be doing. And therefore, those of you who are sitting on the outside, I have good news for you. 
there are some empty seats inside here. So I encourage you to come in and have a seat as we speak about this great woman of God. I was just kidding. No worries, sir. We went out in short enough time. You are listening for the late Rosalie Elizabeth Huffington Dixon. Lord, we cannot thy purpose see, but all is well that's done by thee. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, we are gathered here today to bid a fond farewell to the remarkable Rosalie Elizabeth Huffington Dixon. Known for her vibrant personality and unwavering dedication, Rosalie was a force to be reckoned with both in and out of the classroom. She was born September 13, 1958, in Grovetown, South Manchester, to parents very sweet happened in, I said happened in, not Hammond, and Clarice Watt. She was the first child for both parties, and of course she had seven siblings. She grew up under the care of her late grandmother, Martina Wright, due to her mother migrating to England when she was only four years old. Despite not having her biological mother present, Rosalie had a very happy and fulfilling childhood as her grandmother raised her very well. She had the privilege of visiting her aunt and grand aunt and other family members in the adjoining district that we call Hutton Juan. From the moment she reached Sister Vi's gate, we never had cell phones those days, she would call out that she was there and all the children would run to meet her and she would always have some goodies, and you've heard about that before, from pear to mangoes are the latest fruits in season. She was such a kind and caring individual from an early age, and this remained until she passed. She was part of the fund of her aunt, Nate, in Longwood, Clarendon, where she would spend many summer holidays with her aunt and cousins, not to mention her uncle, uncle-in-law, Busha. She was so fascinated by the tree. Anybody know what that is? Young people know what that tree is? Oh, Lord. It's a, it's a car that was pulled by a uh, uh, or as a donkey or a mule, okay? And she'll talk about it all the time when she come back to Manchester. But her aunt may use to sell, I didn't say sell fish, not that she was selling fish, but she was an entrepreneur selling fish. And of course, when her band came to Manchester on a weekly basis, Rosalie would always get her share of fish and she'd fry them. And you could bet that on a Sunday afternoon, she'd be taking some to share with her cousins. Rosalie was just a caring and loving person who cared so much about family. Growing up, I always wondered and why Rosalie was always present at all our family events, whether it was from my mother's side of the family or my father's side of the family. And then I discovered something that just, just my siblings here would have that privilege. You see, Rosalie is my cousin from both sides. Yes, Rosalie's mother and my father are two sisters' children. And Rosalie's father and my mother are two sisters' children. So that is why she was always at every family event. And I only discovered that thing later why she loved me so much. You see her father, and I told her that already, and therefore you know what happened? She could not say to me, he could not say to me that um, anything I did wrong, you get it from your father's side and you get it from your mother's side. Because anyhow she said that, she would be talking about her side. So I was in a privileged position. You see, Rosalie attended the Grove Town Primary School and then she transitioned to Iona High School where she was boarded and during, during her high school years. From her humble beginning in Grove Town to her illustrious career as an educator, Rosalie's journey was one filled with passion and zest for life. As a first child in a brood of seven siblings, she quickly learned the ropes of responsibility, a skill that would serve her well throughout her life. Rosalie's love for teaching was evident from an early age when she began in her career as a pre-trained teacher at the tender age of 18 at the Grove Town Primary School. Rosalie was also very active in the Grove Attending camps. Her kindness did not go unnoticed 
at these campuses, all the campus would know her because of her generosity. She would carry bags of pear and oranges and tangerine and mangoes or any fruit that was in season and she would share with everyone just like how she was raised by her aunt, Aunt Martina, that's what I call her. When she came with her ripe pear at camp, everyone would get a pear. Oh, Rosalie, so kind, so caring. She was, an, she was active in good fellowship and Sunday school. She was a talk of the tongue for her exploits in a Christmas present at Grove Town United Church. One year when she Due to her deep passion for teaching and educating others, Rosalie decided to strengthen her qualifications by enrolling into Teachers College, where she pursued her diploma at then Bethlehem Training College, now known as Bethlehem Moravian College. Of course, prior to that, she started at West Indies College. During her tenure there, Rosalie met her life partner, Mr. Barrington Dixon, in 1984, who she courted for a few years before becoming, welcoming their first child, Dorna, and they tied the knot on December 31st, 1986. Despite being a full-time wife and new mother, Rosalie still returned to complete her studies. She completed her diploma in primary education and immediately went back into the classroom. She was given the option to return to Grovetown Primary School for a full-time teaching position or a plowed all day school. Now, the normal person would choose what? Grovetown. But instead, she took up the offer at Plowden in 1989. I guess we can say ants for the fact. Mrs. Dixon was also living with her husband in Cloud and family home along with her first child daughter. She started attending the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Rest Tour. I, I, I remember the child who always is only the mile post. Anybody know them? Yes. Nine miles to Rest Tour, eight miles to I guess it's a place to talk at academics. Rosalie was a master juggler, balancing her teaching duties with my in the school canteen and organizing school events that would leave and not just my cousin, my double cousin. It was probably a good thing because when he was in fifth form, the staff voted him as head boy without knowing that he was my cousin. Own merit. I can remember those days when we had barbecue and Rosalie would send all the seasonings for us. Sometimes when there was a drought and seasonings were scarce, she would say, I do not have any, but there are some persons who have. I'm going to buy some for you. And then general soul she was. She did not stop sending seasonings from you. And she would send it with them the same. I mentioned the seasoning for the school, but I did not mention the mangoes and the melon and other fruits she would send for me. Sometimes she would call me and say, I left something for you at Mr. Simpson's supermarket. And there would be for me seasons and fruits galore. Sometimes I think she would just stay up at night and say, whose life should I touch tomorrow, Lord? Her love for me and the way she spoke about me caused a special bond developed between proud primary students and I. So much so that one of our students, Swan Shaw, who is now a police officer, is like a daughter to me, past student of me. Ladies and gentlemen, time will not allow me to give justice to the type of person Rosalie was. She planned school trips and school events such as fun days and sports days. She was honored with the senior teacher position in January 2017. She was honored with several teaching awards over the years and represented the school in different functions across the island. Outside her teaching career, she partake in being a neighborhood watch representative for disaster management. She enjoyed farming and growing her flowers in her home. She planned church trips along with bee trips and church harvest. She enjoyed taking pride in her appearance where she was big on shopping and going out. She had a big collection of handbags to match any outfit. Now I go around the house, no help anything, people. Black being her favorite shades. She was very neat, punctual, and responsible, and on time. She was a peacemaker. 
very Jovia, like no any room when she walked in. Nothing went to waste for her as she was very handy and creative. She turned anything into something of good value. In the Jamaican expression, she could turn her hand and make fashion. She was always taking goodies for her loved ones and friends or even strangers. She even took gifts for nurses at her She blessed them with something positive to brighten their day. Oh, how we need more Rosalies in this world. She was an open book to anyone in need, regardless whether it was money, food, educational support, or moral support. She was big on her Christianity. She played a major role in the United Church, as I told you, in her younger days, and presently she did as elder in the SDA. And you heard earlier from the church how she played her part. But she loved traveling. She made use of all her summer and winter breaks to visit family in the US and the UK. Let me tell you, her mother left Jamaica when she was four, and Maxine told her about that, and never returned. Rosalie had the privilege of going to England to meet her mother way in her adult life. Was she bitter? No, she was excited. She was so overjoyed to meet her mother. And it was indeed a grand reunion because of the type of person Rosalie was. There are many persons who would have picked up and them to not Rosalie. But she did not stop. In England, and you heard the bride to attend the funeral. Now, I never had the privilege of meeting her mother, my cousin, with my father's first cousin. But Rosalie showed me her picture on the funeral program that she took off from England. To be honest with you, when I saw the picture, I was speechless. I knew her all the time because she was the splitting image of Rosalie. Or should I say, Rosalie was the splitting image of her. Rosalie was a natural cook at heart, especially her variety of curry dishes or steamed fish. She was very informative and knowledgeable of everything going on around her and she was always available to anyone in need of information or something. And if she can't, find it. She wrote references for many, made job recommendations and referrals, and stood as guarantors for many people. She believed in education, whereby she made sure both her children experienced some of the teaching, even her grandchildren too. Even in her last days, she made the effort for both of her children to be educated and stressed the importance of being educated. Rosalie had some favorite lines or expressions, but I'll tell you a few. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Have mercy to the tomb. Lord, give me the case and take the pill. And they say, I'm say, regal stone. I don't know what that means. She was so much of a selfless woman, where even in her last days, regardless of being sick, she was very concerned about her loved ones. She always made a count that everyone ate. If they are okay, she wanted to find if you're okay and if you are in good health. That time she was sick. Mrs. Dix would never go to bed if anyone from the household was not home. She stayed up until they were home, even in her sick days. That is how Rosalie was. After retiring, I have Mrs. Dixon. I say always oh, Rosalie. Rosalie migrated to the USA and spent most of her days around her children and the grandchildren. And you and I know that when it comes to grandchildren, those are very special. Because you can have the fun as grandparents and you don't have to worry about the responsibility. What a wonderful place to be. <laughs> Anyone else who she didn't have physically in person, she spent hours on the phone with them. Let me tell you how caring Rosalie was. And this caused some family members and persons close to her to be upset. But this is the type of person she was. She did not let them know the magnitude of, of her illness because she did not want to burden them with her challenges. She wanted them to be positive and enthusiastic as she was. This is how she showed how much she cared. And it could be misinterpreted. You know, I remember Auntie May's funeral a few years ago. At the funeral service and gave such a moving tribute about the time she spent with Aunt May and family. 
And of course, she gave details of the dream. <laughs> Regardless of being sick, she was very positive and had a vibrant and contagious enthusiasm which was evident to anyone who experienced her. She enjoyed watching football with her son. She was a big Liverpool supporter. She enjoyed going out for car rides, and regardless of where the trip was headed, she was packed and ready before you say the word. She was always teaching something new to her family and friends. Throughout the period of time where she was ill, she was very positive and getting better. She never once gave up. Even when she was in the hospital, she wrote and reassured her children that she would be okay and out soon. Of course, that is true. This shows how much of a positive woman she was, regardless of how she was feeling. Her level of selflessness was unreal. Despite her many accomplishments, Rosalie remained grounded, always ready to lead, lend a helping hand or share a kind word with those around her. Her dedication to her students, colleagues, and community accolades and honors over the years. Rosalie left a legacy behind. But despite all this, the Bible tells us that it is appointed unto man once to die, and after death, the judgment. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, family members, let us all prepare for this appointment. I know we have the tendency to prepare for the one to go to the embassy and the other, but this is an appointment, and, and, and Pastor mentioned all of that. How important it is for us to ensure this appointment. It is said that there was a Jamaican man who death came for him. But somehow, like Jamaicans always do, he got wind that death was coming. Now, it so happened that death was coming for him full of gray hair. So like, as I look around, many persons do. Them say, I'd rather die, I mean, die my hair, than let anyone know my age. So he dyed his hair. So when they came and saw him, they said, man, I never made a mistake before. How come you're the one I came for? It's the first that I'm going to make a mistake. So unfortunate, but fortunately for you, I will have to leave because it's the wrong person that I have. And so it happened that the gentleman was so happy when death was leaving, he waved to death and he waved, but he had on a sleeveless shirt and he never remembered dying in here under his arm. And so they turned back and said, I know that I never made a mistake. And therefore, my friends, as we celebrate Rosalie's life, if it's one legacy that we can give, is to make sure that we prepare for that appointment. As we bid goodbye to Rosalie today, let us remember her not with tears, but with laughter and joy for having known such a remarkable soul. Left to cherish her memories are her children, Dorna and Douglas, her husband, Barton, grandchildren, son-in-law, sisters, brothers, cousins, nieces, nephews, colleagues, a host of friends and relatives, too numerous to mention. But I have to mention her special friend who came up here, Mrs. Maxine Henning, who's also my colleague. But I tell you, my friends, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. May her spirit live on in the lessons she taught and the lives she touched. Rest in peace, Rosalie Huffman Dix. Your legacy will continue to inspire us all. God bless you all. Thank you, sir.
they are members of the family who are in mourning at this time. I pray that you will let them know that they should not mourn as one who have no hope because we know that there is hope in King Jesus. Lord, we ask you now that you will send words of encouragement, words of comfort to the family members and even the close uh, friends and relatives to uh, remind them, God, that even though we would have lost a loved one, that we can count it as a gain because what you have in store for us cannot be compared to all the challenges and sufferings that we face on this earth. We pray, God, that you will uh, be with the friends who came here as well and help them to continue to give support to the family as they go through this day of, of bereavement and mourning. We ask you for your blessing also on the, the final interment, that everything will be done to your name, to your honor, and to your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right, so we, I invite you to, to remain seated, to be seated at this Jesus is coming again, and just want to let you know that after we sing the first verse of the chorus of the of the song, the platform party will march to Palmeiras with the casket family members and then the rest of the congregation and lead them to the place of internment. The first will follow the officiated ministers, followed by the family members, and all the others will travel behind to the place of interment. We're going to sing the song, lift up the trumpet and let it ring. Jesus is coming. Okay.
that store. Oh! 
All right, there is no open. You know, they never open that right. church now. No, no, no. It is no. not open. Why? That is the request of the family. It's fine. It never open my church. Everything I want my church is going to open me. They never open that church. Should be honored. Daddy, make you stay here. Daddy, leave it alone. What? No, don't open. Daddy, make it. Don't open. Daddy, make it. No, they are here. They don't want to open. Daddy, make it. Daddy, make it. 
All right. Um, we're gonna do the, the, the committal at this time. You know, no. Them say she requested she know what to do. Yeah. I don't know. I don't I don't I don't I don't I don't I I all right, we're gonna sing back, begin with the first stanza, just one stanza for the trumpet of the Lord to sound. And time shall, and be, time no shall be no more. And the morning the morning breaks turn and bright, bright and fair. And fair. When the faith of earth shall gather to their home beyond the shore, the and the road is called a flood. We're going to no, see we can't see because we're not looking. Yeah. So no, 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 look good. No, no, not open. So not really. Eh? When the trumpet the of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up, when the roll is called up yonder, when Consent to go ahead, so we will proceed. All right, so the scripture reading John 14 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled, ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have found you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. May go under for me, please. Please, please go under. Yeah. Under this born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He flees also as a shadow and continueth not. If a man die, shall he live again? All the appointed days of my life will I wait till my change come. Thou shalt call and I will answer. Thou shalt have the desire and the works of thy hands. Okay. For as much as God in his infinite love and wisdom has permitted our dear sister to fall asleep in Christ. We do tenderly commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ash to ash, and dust to dust, in the sure and certain hope of a joyful resurrection. 
when our Lord shall return and change his body of our humiliation and made it like unto his glorious body, whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. The prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we are grateful for the life of your daughter. She lived a life, a well-lived life, so much so that she impacted all of us gathered here today. We ask God that you will mark this spot, that on that great getting up morning, if she was faithful unto death, that when you call, she will answer. I pray God that you will comfort the family members, the husband and children and relatives, that they too will have the hope that burns within our heart that you will come soon. Be with the proceedings as we continue. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, undertakers, you can cover. Those who are responsible. Huh? I know. open a church, you know, what must go on is go work here. We shall have a grand time of We shall have a we shall have a grand time of in heaven. We shall have a grand time of in heaven. We shall have a grand time of in heaven. Walking with the angels. We shall have a grand time of in heaven. Meet me by the river. By the river. Fix up two pounds for this Some happy day, lead me by the river. Not far away, for when my Lord shall call me home, what happy old me understand. By the river. Sunday. Oh, yes, and lead me by the river. Someday, meet me by the river, not far away. Oh, when my Lord shall call me home, what have you only on the sky? Meet me by the river, someday. Meet me by the river, someday. Well, let's stay there so we can. Meet me by the river. Not far away, oh, when my Lord shall call me home, what happy home we understand. Meet me by the river, someday. If you miss me, don't come searching. If you don't find me, you'll know that I'm gone. If you don't hear from me, Watch it down, you have to make sure it closed before you know the rain. You have to make sure, you see? You have to make sure it closed before. Yeah. Go before the rain. Go before the rain. We have to see that it's closed.
and heaven rejoice come over ring out those heaven bells when i get there oh what a glory that will be oh when the ransom soul oh yes hallelujah oh when we reach in beauty we must still have raw black left Take your time, move fast, young general. Oh, <laughs> oh, what a oh, oh, what a hallelujah. When we reach in the land, what a glory that will be. When I get there, when I get there. I will sing and shout when I get there. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. When I get there, the first songs are always from after the fact. When I get there, when I get there, I will sing and shout when I get there. Yeah, all Adventists. Yeah. Adventist. <laughs> <laughs> hear it, man. <laughs> Decree. Okay. What a world we gave the portal. Live to dwell with him, immortal. Then we ring those golden bells for you and me. Don't you hear the end? Hallelujah, 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 Keep your finger on the golden pen. Oh, the, the golden, golden pen. pen. The golden pen. Touch your finger on the golden pen and write my name up there. Write my name. Write my name up there. Write my name. Write my name up there. I said to touch your finger on the golden. Oh, the golden. Oh, the golden pen. Touch your finger on the golden pen. Write my name up there. Write my name. Write my name up there. Write my name. Write my name up there. Oh yes, Finger on the golden. Oh the golden. Oh the golden. I said to touch your finger on the golden pen. Write my name up there. Amen. Lovely singing. Amen. Let's sing, come we that love the Lord. And let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. Come we that love the Lord. And let our joys be known. Join in the song with sweet accord. Join in. A song with sweet accord and that surround the throne and that surround the throne. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to heaven of Zion, the beautiful city of God. Who never knew a God, but children of the heavenly King, but children of the heavenly King, may speak their joys abroad, may speak their joys abroad. Yes, we are marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. City of God, the hills of 
That is the assurance we have because God has promised it and anything that he promised he will fulfill oh yeah so now we repeat together the end of the 19th Psalm that the words of our mouth and meditation be acceptable in thy sight O Lord and strength and our Amen. thanks to everyone who have participated the workmen who yes. have done an excellent job yeah we thank you and may you continue to do good. Yeah. You can't sing on a sleep on beloved this morning. Sleep on beloved, sleep and take thy rest. Lay down thy head up on thy seventh rest. He love you well, but Jesus loves you best. Good night, good night. say it's raining all around me yeah and we are still at Miss Dixon repass
So this is where um that that that, that kitchen is where we refresh ourselves, yeah. Okay, P. 